Hi, I'm Bert. This is past story time. I have way more books than I thought I had. I will do a book haul of some recent books I've picked up. Which is weird, considering I don't read anymore. You've, um, been, you've been reading. I've been reading a bit more. Come on now. Um, I think these are helping me uh, get back into reading. So, um, yeah, lots of sort of second-hand type things. Let me just sort of put those all together somewhere. Um, and some new stuff. Okay. We go with it? We'll, go, we'll start off with the second-hand stuff. Um, so yeah, in an attempt for me to... This is a, the uh, realisation that I've had, like an epiphany, was that, like, everything else that I like, films, music, like, the stuff that I consume the most, is all kind of just 70s, 60s, 70s, 70s made-for-TV thrillers, 70s psychedelic music, you know, like a prog, it, you know, it, it, that's where my heart is, so why am I not doing that with books, right? And um, my sort of old little books are my version of that, and I always feel comfortable and great reading them, but then I always feel a bit guilty that I'm not reading the new contemporary uh, uh, stuff that everyone else seems to love so much. I want to be those people, but I'm not. I am me. <laughs> So, I've just consumed. I've, I've I've bought some uh, old stuff that makes me feel just myself. Um, so we went um, to we went charity shopping around Canton, which is near where we live. Or, you know, kind of right where we live. Um, and we had a fun a fun little day out, didn't we? So we were walking. It's our new sort of walking um, regimen, and. Um, we went to the charity shops and we had a look in a lot of them. But one particular one had some gold. There was one as well that had like loads of like young adult sort of supernatural stuff, didn't it? Yeah, it's weird how like they have different ones in different shops. Yeah, and I kind of was tempted, but a lot of them were like volume two or something. Or... Yeah. But and then some just some guy sort of just budged in and he, he like started looking at the shelves. And yeah, like, I was like, you don't want that. No, maybe he did. But, um, yeah. So, yeah. we know there's one that caters to yeah. Supernatural Teen. <laughs> um, but these I found in another one. So, they had lots and lots of James Hadley Chase novels. Um, the one that I have just finished reading, I haven't brought through because I forgot about that. So, I've, I've read one of these already and, and really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. Um, that was A Coffin to Hong Kong. I'll put that picture up. Um, but I found these. So, this is uh, Lady... Here's your wreath. I love this cover and this title, Believed Violent, by James Hadley Chase. Uh, this is about a rocket engineer. And this one, she's very oily. Um, hit them where it hurts. Now this one, I think, uh, looking at it, it, was a bit of a later one. This is an 80s one. Let's see how oily they look. Oh yeah. Really oily. <laughs> Uh, baby oil, so yeah, I picked up, uh, and they had more. These were the ones that I sort of grabbed, so I know where to go for James Hadley Chase. Um, and but as well as that, and I like to think that these all belong to the same person. I found this, which is a little bit beaten up, but I fixed it a little bit with a bit of sellotape. This is the Center of the Cyclone by John C. Lilly, which I was, you know, drawn by that amazing cover to begin with. But it's a, uh, he's a doctor, and it's, it's, um, it's got the subheading of an autobiography of inner space. Uh, this is um, his look at LSD. Um, his own personal experiences and experiments under condition, conditions of solitude, confinement, LSD and mystical inspiration. He provides a scientific account of how the mind operates on various special levels of consciousness. So yeah, it's got, it's got a blurb on the or a quote on the back from Alan Watts. Um, he's an eminent scientist, it says, um, who's sort of exploring the mystical elements of being human. So this is from 
And yeah, I just couldn't not pick that up. Um, so Sean doesn't even know about some of these books. I think. Yeah. These are ones that I sort of picked up from Trapmark mostly okay. in well, town. I mean, over, I mean, I've been sort of doing multiple trips. Shown to me. I think I showed you some of them, not all of them, but. Okay. I'm not sure. How's this pronounced? I know that she's. Uh, was it a she? I'm not even sure. Nigeo March. Marsh. Nigeo Marsh. Nigeo Marsh. I haven't read any um, of this author. Have you read any of this author? So I know they're sort of Agatha Christie era crimes. And um, again, they had quite a few of these in the bookshop. Um, I picked this one up because it's called Death at the Bar and it's got some darts on the cover. Um, uh, so I think it's from the 30s, um, originally. Um, yeah, it's a murder mystery from the 30s. Sounds very good, doesn't it, Shani? Yeah. Yeah. No, I love murder mysteries. Yeah, I don't know who who this person is. I mean, I, I'm aware we, we used to sell them in the bookshop, but um, no, I, I, I never picked him up and looked at him. So, uh, let me know. I found this gold in uh, Troutmark. This is uh, not the greatest edition. It's a '90s edition uh, of the Stochastic Man by Robert Silverberg. Robert Silverberg is my favourite science fiction writer and this is from his peak mid 70s era um, where he wrote um, just everything he wrote during that that sort of moment was amazing. Um, so yeah this is from then 1975. Um, so he wrote like the Book of Skulls and um, Dead Dead Inside or Dying, Dying Inside. Um, some of my favourite Sort of counterculture sci fi from the 70s. Uh, so this is a bi about a guy that is sto does stochastic prediction. And then he meets a guy with actual um, intuitive um, abilities so he can see the future. Uh, it's going to be really good. And it's got blood from J.G. Ballard in the back, who says it's an engaging tale. The novel is, as fast and li is a fast and literate read. Perhaps an early example of a new kind of sci-fi whose chief interest will be its reflection of popular response, not to science and technology, but to modern intellectualism. I got book two of the Adam Steele series. I read book one quite a while ago. This is by George Gilman, who uh, wrote the uh, Edge series. This is another character that he writes. Um, I think at, at some point he did some books where they're sort of both together, sort of... Um, Steel and Edge. Um, crossover. Hmm? A little crossover. Yeah, a little crossover. This is a lovely cover. He's got a weird sort of posture there, like he's sort of... He's, he's been leaning over to maybe pick up his jacket and he's just getting back up again. And he's just been caught in that moment there, in the snow. Um, Bounty Hunter, 1974. Steel stumbles into trouble at a squalid small town bar in Mexico. And then, the, in Troutmark upstairs, in the sci fi section, they had loads of new Alan Dean Foster stock, which looked unread and it was like a shelf and a half. Loads of stuff. Um, and I have tried Alan Dean Foster before and DNF'd him. Um, I'm going to try him again. I couldn't resist because some of the covers were great and they just sounded really good and. This one's called Glory Lane. I haven't shown these yet, have I? I don't think so. No, maybe in a vlog. Yeah, but that's fine. But uh, yeah, so Glory Lane. This is an eighties an one. They look sort of a bit like comic, sci-fi, adventure. -y. I'm not sure. Nineteen eighty-seven. Um, I just really like this cover of how eighties it is. I think it's got like a punk on there. Um, it says there's a there's a, a punk. Um, uh, a nerd, Miranda, the born to shop, a Miss Teen America look-alike, um, and they're driven by a green-skinned tentacle, green-skinned tentacle-shaped changer, and about to, there's some kind of chase <laughs> through space with all these characters, you know, it's a, like, a weird bunch of people together, kind of mishmash uh, uh, book. So there's the aliens at the bottom there. Another Andy and Foster, and this is oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, they're really cute, aren't they? Oh, they are. Yeah, very cute. Yeah, on the back of the floor. 
Yeah, that squirrel. Oh, that one's really cute. Yeah. yeah. And this is um, one about sea monsters called Cachalot. I, I kind of, for some reason, you know, sometimes you just see something and you feel that like you have a pull. Yeah. To, to really not sure why. This is really sort of drawing me in. Um, man had destroyed the great sea creatures. Nearly destroyed the great sea creatures, but were they uh, taking their revenge? So some kind of future Earth. We just keep destroying the planet. This is what's going to happen if we keep doing it. This is a, 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 a series, I think, a war <laughs> of the sergeant. Um, I don't think I've seen this one. No, uh, this, Kept that one quiet. Did, I did keep this on secret. Yeah. <laughs> this is um, called Bullet Bridge um, by Gordon Davis. I think there are a series of these books about the sergeant. He, I bet he's a bit of a prick, mm. the sergeant. But um, it's a mission made for Mahoney and to hell with the orders. Sergeant C.J. Mahoney. Um, yeah, um, so World War Two, I think. Uh, it's got Nazis in it, with bayonets and bazookas. Uh, yeah, it's uh, action adventure. Men fighting in the war. Yes. Yeah. Men. Yeah. <laughs> and then I found two modesty Blaze novels, both from the indoor market. So I read the first one a while ago so I reissued it and I enjoyed it I thought it was a bit over long mm. but I really like the character of Modesty Blaze why is um, everything over long? yeah they can yeah. be a bit over long yeah. because trash needs to be short yeah it? yeah um, so this is um, Last Day in Limbo a new adventure uh, Last Day in Limbo and yeah. this one is the Silver Mistress it's kind of a little bit I think they're sort of um, Susie Quattro kind of outfit there so I think these are early 70s editions. Yeah, sort of mid-70s editions. I'm not sure how many books there were in this series, but pick these up. Bookish Mama Bloom says yeah. she looks like uh, Ruby Wax. Oh yeah, Charlotte said that well, she looks that, like... That one, yeah. Yeah, Ruby Wax. <laughs> and that, yeah, it's difficult to not see it when you, uh, <laughs> when you think of that. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, got those. So these are my second-hand books. I think you'd admit that I've done very, very well there, very and I'm well. very excited about yeah. it. Yeah. So, um, I uh, host a like an open mic sort of poetry thing in um, our uh, local cafe, Lufkin, in the park in Cardiff here, and um, a friend of mine um, asked if they might consider hosting another sort of poetry event, um, and has asked me to sort of compare it it's the end of July um, for a poet called Jenny Mitchell um, so that sounds great and I thought I would treat myself to a Jenny Mitchell uh, collection so this is her debut collection she's had one out since um, and this is it it's um, her lost language um, this is on Indigo Dreams publishing and I think um, I could be wrong but I think this was um, on the forward prize for like a um, Either an individual poem or like as a debut collection, I can't remember. Um, but it would have been 2019. So yeah, it says on the back, it's a prize winning debut collection, um, exploration of the impact of British transatlantic enslavement on black lives and family dynamics. It com combines grounded realism with imaginative empathy on a journey from the Caribbean to Britain. I guess uh, an insight into the Caribbean British immigrant experience um, and also the, spirit, the experience of enslavement um, of previous generations um yeah that um we went book shopping didn't we shani we went to waterstones yeah yeah did you bought you bought something you bought a couple yeah. of things was it yeah shani bought a couple of things i bought clive barker oh yeah shani um, bought clive barker yeah um hex one what was that called um, oh yeah Pay yeah Pax like a, witch. a witchy yeah. one was it I can't, can't remember yeah. and i got um the Futurological Congress by Stanislav Lem because um, it's tiny and I like the cover and I, I he wrote Solaris I think did he write Solaris? yeah he wrote Solaris I loved Solaris well, it was absolutely brilliant um, so I've been wanting to read more by him I do have another book by him but it's not, it's not an excuse not to buy another one um, so this is translated from the Polish by Michael Kandel um, 
and it's from 1971 originally. Um, I, I think it's sort of yeah, sort of science fiction, sort of a bit sort of satire, commentary on stuff, overpopulation, and uh, probably the ecology. Um, but uh, yeah, there's hallucinogenic, hallucinogenic drugs involved. Oops. Um, we found the road by Cormac McCarthy in Tesco. Yeah, there's a little, Tesco. yeah, there's a little charity book. Thing, yeah, that's isn't right. There? It's a little area, and they've always got different books. <laughs> um, usually nothing going, that we're interested in. Yeah, but, I was thinking yeah. of going to Tesco. I wanted to get some ice cream. Oh, get so. me some pie if you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and see what the books yeah. are. Yeah. So I've always wanted to read this. It's fifty p. It's fifty p, and I can't say no. And it does look unread, although it's kind of nicely discoloured as well. Um, I, I, I'm not a fan of film tying covers, so this isn't the edition I would have bought. But it's fifty p to charity. Um, um, I am a fan of film yeah, tying covers. I don't mind have it's got Vigo on the cover, so yeah. it could be way worse. Um, but yeah, I only read one other Cormac McCarthy, Child of God, and I thought that was really good. Um, and I, those of my mates loved this book, and it sounds really sort of depressing and dystopian. And, and then he's got new books coming like. out. And too, yeah, he's yeah. sort of, uh, I guess, bucket back in, on the radar because of these this new theology that he's got. Um, yeah, I, you know, it's going to go on the the pile. But yeah. One day I will want to read it. Yeah. For fifty p. Why not? For fifty p. Why not? Charity. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> now, Sean just amazingly kindly. Um, got me this book because I mentioned wanting to read it and um, this is Gwen in Green by Hugh Zachary it's on the Paperbacks from Hell series um, and again a quite a slight one so I think this is you know sort of edging back into um, reading little books um, but this book without knowing anything about it this cover uh, has been on my sort of Pinterest uh, images that I really like and you know books I want to find for like over a decade just because I was just really drawn to it for years and so quite recently it's been uh, released on paperbacks from hell so I mentioned that to Sean and she's just she's got she's it treated me to it she bought lovely. herself Goblin she bought herself Goblin yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's an eco horror apparently from 1974 um, it's about a couple that go to settle in some new uh, secluded paradise lush green landscape of plants I think something takes over or goes wrong can we read that one soon yeah, I want to read it soon. Okay, and then I'll read it. Yeah. And finally, because it's summer, and like it's actually summer now, like warm, sunny, um, I found this book in Waterstones this week, not knowing anything about it, seeing that it was Italian. It's Gianfranco Caligaric? Caligia? Caligaric? 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 Um, <laughs> after, with an afterward by Andre Asiman. This is Last Summer in the City, and it's a 70s uh, novel, just newly translated, I think, this year. So this, is from, uh, this edition's from uh, 2022. Uh, it's set in the late 60s, and it's about a Leo Garazza, who leads a precarious life in Rome. Uh, he spends his time in an alcoholic haze, bouncing between hotels, bars, uninspiring jobs, romantic entanglements, and the homes of his rich friends. He drifts aimless and alone. But on his 30th birthday, he meets Ariana, all night they drive, this, they drive the city talking and talking, they eat brioche for breakfast, drink through the dawn, drive to the sea and back. A whirlwind beginning. What follows is the story of the year Leo fell in love and lost everything. So tragic romance, and I love that sort of over that, you know, I don't think it's going to be set all in one night, but like I love that sort of initial, you know, one big night changes your life and that whole walking around the town with someone you just met, having brioche, exploring, getting to know each other destroying your soul kind of relationship and it's just there's this looks so summery and Italian um, it's a forgotten classic it says so yeah I had to get that and that's my pile of books that was a good pile wasn't it what do you think of me now <laughs> I think you're right <laughs> Oh, thanks. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for sitting through that with me. Uh, let me know if there's anything that has caught your eye. Let me know if there's anything you've read. You've caught my eye. Thank you. Yeah. Um, or would like to uh, talk about with me. 